Okay, here it is, all finished with the uh, mystery box. Uh, I bought this on eBay not too long ago um, because it was a mystery box. Um, it has the Linko colors, so I figured it was a Linko with the blue, greenish uh, color. That's what a Linko uses, and the yellow stripe and. Uh, we saw it on eBay and I'm like boy that's a new one I've had a Linko LR1 so I think I still got a couple of them and a, a Linko LR6 sold that one but I'd never seen this one before and the big tubes in it and I'm like what's that so I probably paid a little bit too much for it but uh, uh, my curiosity was piqued and I wanted to um, get inside one to see what's in it and now I've went through it uh, did a reverse schematic because there's almost no information on this thing and uh, we want to see what make it tick so we reverse engineered the schematic and did a little research couldn't find anything on the amp uh, basically um, I even got a manual with it but the manual is just you know how to use it and how many watts to drive it with and uh, what it'll put out and basically the manual says you can drive it with up to 15 watts um and you should expect 150 watts out with 15 watts drive and a little bit less or a lot less with lower drive i'm like okay interesting but one of the things it looks like it's one drive and four as far as the tube configuration but it's not all of those are the same tube 1625s which are very early uh tubes back in the day the tubes were uh, first made in 1943 and uh, those are equivalent to 807s with a di little bit different base and the filament voltage is different but uh, basically 807s very early tubes they were used in World War II according to Wikipedia and uh, at the World War II they had a surplus on them and you could get them for a penny from Wikipedia back then, and I guess they say, uh, uh, and at the World War II, since they were, you know, cheap and plentiful, 807s and 1625s, that uh, hams and experimenters, builders, they, um, you know, got the tube and started putting them in the amplifiers and used them for audio and modulators too. Uh, pretty versatile tube, but not really a powerhouse. Um, basically. Um, and this is according to Ned, and I've said this before, and I got flack for for it from some people. It's basically a six L six audio tube um, with the pin out on top. And since I was looking up Wikipedia, uh, trying to find information on the tubes in this amp, Wikipedia on the eight L seven basically says that that um amateur radios like the 807s and 1625s even though it's almost the same as the 6L6 because it has the plate or the high voltage coming across the top and they said what happens when you um, have the high voltage coming out the bottom pin is that it likes to arc to the other pin since it's so close and I said that a long time ago and people gave me uh, slack that you know basically a lot of difference between these um, audio tubes and these so-called RF tubes is you just basically taking the plate out the top that kind of cleans it up a little bit uh, gives it a little bit better uh, C1 capacitance so you can run it at a higher frequency and again you don't get the arc and you don't get the feedback because you're running the output you know right through the bottom where the pins and the um, wiring for the inputs are that's you know so the uh, ones with the pins on the top are better suited for RF than the um, ones coming out the bottom okay um, so these tubes are rated at 30 watts a piece um, plate dissipation you know not powerhouses pretty much same as the 6L6's and this amp doesn't really push them very hard uh, for one no driver tube and it's not really turbocharged either um, this tube also is kind of strange with one thing uh, it's a tube in the manual you can look up the uh, 1625 or the 807 which is the same thing with different uh, filament and 
pin out a little bit and with this too from the manual and it's on this amp too you can tie the grid 2 which is the turbo grid and the grid 1 which is the uh, driver or input grid where your drive comes in that you can tie them together I've never heard of that before uh, you know usually with grid 2 you can ground it and that's where you get grounded grid from you know a trial doesn't even have that 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 second grid is the fourth element of a tube so a trial doesn't have it but a tetro you can run it grounded grid by grounding the um, grid 2 but I've never ever heard of uh, putting grid 1 and grid 2 together but it's in the book and it is on this amplifier here uh, let me see if I can show it on this reverse schematic I made okay right here is on the reverse schematic and this is your input coming in right here it's got a little input tune cap on the side right there and then there it is coming into the 1625 tubes pins 3 and 4 tied together I first saw that I'm like wow I've never seen that but you know looking up the tube info it's like this tube can do that you can handle that um, it doesn't really turbocharge it but it does uh, kick up the gain or the drive you know cause since you're going into two grids a little bit but it's not turbocharged and since it's not really fully turbocharged you don't need negative bias or anything like that the, uh, so this tube uh, has very little bias you know uh, basically when you key it down it grounds the uh, cathode right here um, so it's basically a semi grounded grid but it is uh, uh, putting in the drive to grid one and grid two at the same time so I guess I wouldn't call that grounded grid but Anyway, I'm going to do another one and go through it because I just wanted to key down on this one. So I'll stop all the talking and all the history and uh, mystery amp. And by the way, the book says 150 watts. And basically, that's what I'm getting out of at peak. And since my rut, mud duck radios only do three, uh, four, or five watts, maybe swinging to 10, and this one. Uh, to get full output, you need 15 uh, into it. I did uh, hook up the little JB12 uh, to drive it a little bit, to give it a little bit of kick. And we are on the 200 watt scale there, uh, that watt meter, and keying her down. So we did keying 50. Audio, audio, audio. Talking about 90. And shishin, whistle ain't working. Whistle will be about 110 too on average. And last on peak, audio, audio, shh, audio, audio. Looks like about 140 peak. Um, doesn't really push the tubes that hard. Uh, you know the little JB12 going into it. My plate current is up a little bit. Um, and that's it does everything it's supposed to do you know not a powerhouse you know if, if I was looking for watts or expecting watts I was disappointed in that and one other thing uh, you can see the new toroid here uh, transformer because um, when I started going through it I found that the um, power transformer here that's the original power transformer it had a short and also this is very early technology instead of using a um, filter cap bank to um, help turn the uh, the rectified AC into uh, DC it uses basically a swinging choke and a small value um, oil field capacitor and um, from what I read um, toroids don't like swinging chokes and for the most part, uh, I think Henry still using them, but amplifiers, you know, got away from that big, heavy swinging choke. And then you need a small uh, cap to help filter it. And then you need to have a heavy load on it at all times or else that swinging choke will swing out of control, basically, unless you uh, load it down. So um, since I had to get a toroid on it anyway, I just went to a modern 
uh, capacitor bank on only power supply and got rid of the uh, swinging choke and the uh, oil field capacitor in this thing or very early technology um, I don't have a manufacturing date for this but that tube was made in the 1943 I think and until about 53 uh, so very early uh, tube um, I'm thinking a very tube amp early made amplifier by a Linko you know early tube early swinging choke um, filter and that weird uh, connecting the grid to pins um, the grid one and grid two but I guess that's why they don't need a driver tube in it but like I say it's not turbocharged you still need to kick it up with a little bit of drive on this thing to get uh, any kind of output with the without the little JB12 um, I'm getting like uh, you know out of a mud duck radio I'm getting like a 30 watt dead key swing into about 60 on it so you know not much for this um, four tube amplifier okay I'll do another one with a walkthrough on it but that's it for uh, the mystery amplifier uh, key down the Linko LR2 bye